Welcome to AQMD on the Air. I'm your host, Mark Carroll. Our guest today is Dr. Sam Garol, the Director of Transportation Programs at General Atomics Advanced Systems and Concepts Office in San Diego, California. He leads their activities in their maglev and electric transportation programs and has over 30 years experience in the research, development, and fabrication of high technology electromagnetic systems involving superconducting magnets, linear induction and synchronous motors, maglev systems, and linear motor technologies used for transportation systems. Dr. Gurl, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. The first thing I want to ask is, what is maglev? Can you describe the concept? Yeah, I, I'd be delighted to. And Mark, thank you, by the way, for uh, inviting me to uh, uh, talk here. Uh, this was quite a wonderful session. Maglev technology has been around for quite a few years. Uh, and in fact, many of the developments in maglev technology early on were m developed here in the United States in the 1960s and 70s. And uh, over the years, uh, other countries have adopted that technology. But you asked, what is maglev? Well, first let me explain what that is. Maglev is a form of transportation where the vehicle is levitated, guided, and propelled by magnetic forces. There are no wheels that provide uh, traction or guidance. Everything is done by magnetic forces. The advantages of the technology are it can go very fast, it can go up steep grades, can make tight turns, and it has low operation and maintenance costs. The downside, and one of the reasons why it has been difficult to get uh, folks excited about maglev, especially in the United States, is it, it's, it has a relatively high cost because it re requires new infrastructure. Now, having said that, uh, other countries have, in fact, started adopting maglev technology. So, in a way, it's a very exciting time for maglev and also technologies associated with maglev, and I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, for example, uh, Shanghai, China has a commercial high-speed maglev system uh, developed by uh, Transrapid in Germany, uh, operating in commercial use since 2004. Mm. Uh, you can ride on it, travel at 275 miles per hour from Shanghai Airport to the downtown, you do the 19 miles in about eight minutes. It's a fabulous ride. And you say, wow, why don't we have this here? Uh, you uh, then look at other countries. For example, um, uh, Japan. They have, uh, since 2004, they built in uh, Nagoya a system for, for the 2004 uh, World Expo. It's uh, a low-speed system, an urban system. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now Korea has uh, come on board and they are building the first uh, commercial system in Korea that uses the same technology as Japan did uh, at the Incheon Airport, about a four-mile system. Here in the United States, uh, we've had starts and stops with, with maglev technology. Uh, my company has been developing th uh, and involved in three types of maglev systems. An urban maglev system that we've been uh, under contract with the Federal Transit Administration, uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, we have a test track operating in San Diego, 450-foot test track. It's designed for speeds up to 100 miles an hour. Uh, we've also been involved with a group uh, that was uh, focused on building a high-speed maglev system using the Transrapid technology connecting Las Vegas with Anaheim. Mm -hmm. And the third project is one few people know about. It's a superconducting maglev system that's rocket-powered uh, for the U.S. Air Force, uh, and in fact, we're building a track at, at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. Uh, this year, in about uh, a couple of months from now, we're going to be uh, getting close to breaking the sound barrier with a magnetically levitated test sled. The goal is to go 10 times the speed of sound. And people would be inside? No. This would be used for uh, testing electronic components and such for military uses but do it at sea level rather than shooting a missile into space. So it's a much more cost-effective way of testing components. I see. Uh, in terms of uh, linear motors, uh, let me talk a little bit about that. Uh, okay. When you talk about maglev, it's magnetically, as I said, magnetically levitated, yeah. propelled, and guided. Well, imagine that you were to put the system back on wheels, but you said, I'm going to get magnetic propulsion. Well, you can take that same motor that's being used by the maglev system to propel the vehicle magnetically, put it in the track, and all of a sudden you have a system that runs on rails, but it's magnetically propelled. The advantage is it's all electric, zero pollution, mm. and 
There are no overhead catenaries or third rail for power pickup. The vehicles are extremely light and inexpensive, so they're very energy efficient. Uh, so that is the other type of technology that comes out of maglev. And what's that called? Uh, that's called, uh, well, we call it a linear synchronous motor. Okay. Uh, the more uh, marketing type name <laughs> we've given the technology is Magna Rail. And it's actually a technology that uh, we think is a credible uh, next step for zero emission transportation technologies for goods movement in the LA Basin. I did want to say, uh, I think uh, I should also indicate that one of the real benefits we have is that the U.S. Department of Defense has over the last 10 years invested close to a billion dollars in developing an electromagnetic aircraft launch system that uses the same linear motor technology. So all the aircraft carriers that are being built now and in the future for the next 50 years are not going to use steam catapults. They are going to be using linear motors mounted in the deck of the ship to launch aircraft. Mm. So that gives you an idea of the status of the technology. Uh, I think uh, the technologies and the technology components are very mature. They're really ready to go into the marketplace. And what I sense uh, in this workshop we had here today is that there is a really uh, great growing momentum to try to get consensus on a path forward. So it's an exciting time. How do you see some of these technologies helping AQMD and the region cleaning up its air? One of the big advantages of these technologies is that they're all electric. Of course, that also means that you have to get energy from a clean source of power. Uh, but because they're all electric and they're autom automated in terms of their control systems, they're also very energy efficient. So that you have a uh, technology, if you use, let's take as an example, linear motors, mm -hmm. because I think it's the one that has, in my opinion, the most potential. Uh, if you were to take existing rail rights of way and you were to retrofit those with these linear synchronous motor modules uh, you would easily be able to retrofit existing railroad track with these linear motors mm -hmm. and uh, then be able to run either individual cars or perhaps even complete trains depending on what the overall vision is for goods movement architecture in the region uh, with these linear synchronous motors and the advantage is, w once again, that you're getting energy from right. very clean sources of power. And uh, so it's, it's a potentially very uh, good way to move goods. And are there any challenges that this region faces to move towards those technologies? I think the biggest challenge is one that uh, AQMD took a leadership role in today, which is to try to get all the stakeholders together to uh, seek a path forward. The biggest problem industry has had was a lack of vision for exactly how we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. If you think about, for example, um, zero emission technologies, there are very few requests for proposals coming out. Now, th that's starting to change. Uh, the Department of Energy now is now s starting to play a big role in uh, clean, renewable energy, and there are significant funding opportunities there. So I think that in addition to having a uh, vision for how we're going to move forward, one of the first things that needs to happen is that Whatever technologies are decided, we need to build on a micro scale some demonstration facilities in the actual working environment uh, that they're going to be operating so we can evaluate them. I think it's going to take some time to do this, but I think we have to take the first step. And building these demonstration systems, especially in, an, in the San Pedro uh, area, is uh, really critical. Well, Dr. Gorel, thank you very much for joining us today, and we want to thank you for your efforts in helping us clean the air. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, that's our show. I'm Mark Carroll. Thank you for watching AQMD on the Air. Visit us at cleanairconnections.org to learn how you can help us clean the air that we breathe.